Hello again, thanks for joining me for another diorama building video. This time it's my mossy waterfall. I used surprisingly few materials for this build, but I'm grateful to Nock and Diorama Presepe for gifting me the items of theirs that you see me using in this video. I hope you enjoy watching this scene being brought to life. I really enjoyed making it. So sit back, relax, and let's get on with it. I'm going to start with a couple of sheets of extruded polystyrene. This is special modeler's quality, and I'm just going to make a rough kind of box out of it. This will be the base, back and sides of the diorama. Nock gifted me this grass glue. It's designed for static grass, but it also works well to stick foam together. Now I'm just going to start building up the landform using some offcuts of extruded polystyrene. I always keep these, they always come in useful. I'm just test fitting some here before I start gluing them in place. Right, I'm going to let that dry thoroughly before carving it with a sharp knife. I'm just shaping it roughly here because the whole thing's going to be covered in sculptor mould anyway. The most important thing is that I haven't left any sharp edges or any points that will be harder to cover up with the sculptor mould. Which I'm going to mix into a fairly thick consistency with water. Not too stiff so that it dries really quickly but not really sloppy either. Enough so that when you lift it up on your stick it doesn't plop off. And now I'm just going to start spreading this about and shaping the rocks. Just being mindful of where I want my waterfalls to be. I reckon I've got about 20 minutes before this cures too hard for me to work it properly. But it will remain smoothable with the finger for quite some time. So it's just a case of making sure you get the main bulk of the sculptor mould on and shaped before you smooth it down.
and now I'm just going to start scratching in the paths for the waterways making sure they're deep enough to hold the resin later yep I'm pretty pleased with that some nice shapes in there some nice big rocks some nice small rocks and now I'm just going to start texturing it with an old brush the bristles on this one have gone stiff it's not a very expensive brush. I wouldn't use an expensive brush for this. In fact, you couldn't. You'd have to use an old stiff brush. So now it will just be a case of leaving that to dry for about 48 hours or so until it's hard. And 48 hours later, here I am with some black and white Vallejo model air. I don't know why I use this. I don't even own an airbrush. I think I just like the consistency of the paint. It's slightly thinner. You can thin it with some airbrush thinners or flow aid as I'm using here. And I'm just creating a kind of mid gray, which I'm going to paint over the entire piece. And now to accentuate the nooks and crannies and cracks in the rock, I'm going to use some Game Ink Black by Vallejo. Again, just thinned down with a small amount of flow aid. And I'm going to paint this all over the model as well. The first highlight layer is going to be Rakarth Flesh from Citadel, which I'm going to apply in a heavy dry brush fashion. And for some added texture and a further highlight, I'm going to be using Armageddon Dust, again by Citadel, and this I'll use fairly sparingly. Just a light dusting, appropriately enough. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that, but I think it needs some more depth. So I'm going to be using some sepia game ink from Vallejo and just applying this lightly over the surface of the Armageddon dust and trying to feather it out and blend it across the rock surface. Yeah, that's better, but now it needs more shade, so I'm going to be using some homemade black ink wash. This has been mixed to a lighter pigmentation than for instance, the Vallejo Black Game Ink. Yeah, that's much better. Happy with that. Okay, so no mossy waterfall is complete without some mossy fallen branches. And for this, I'm using some thyme twigs taken from a larger bunch gifted to me by Diorama Presepe. Again, I'm just gonna test fit these before gluing them in place, this time with super glue. Don't get it on your fingers. And now it's time for the first layer of moss. And for this, I'm going to be using the first product I ever bought, which was Woodland Scenics Fine Turf Green Blend. 
and I'm going to apply this over a layer of scenic glue. You could use diluted PVA of course. I'm going to cover a small area at a time because the glue dries fairly quickly and I'm going to apply a fairly liberal sprinkling of the fine turf. Not forgetting those lovely mossy branches of course. Now to soak it all with a misting of isopropyl alcohol. This just breaks the surface tension of the fine turf, allowing the scenic glue to soak through and fix everything in place. And once this is done, I'll leave it for a couple of hours to dry. Before moving on to the next layer of moss, which is Warworld Scenics 1mm Dead Grass, applied over Warworld Scenics layering spray using the Knock Grassmaster 3.0 Profi with the fine sieve head. Thanks very much to Knock for gifting me this amazing piece of kit. And the 1mm grass is coming out in a bit of a rush, so I'm having to go quite gently with the static grass applicator here. The 1mm grass goes down a bit too evenly, a bit like a carpet, so I'm going to start roughing it up a little bit with an old brush. And I want some areas to be a bit more fluffy, if you like, a bit more thick with moss, so I'm going to add some more layering spray and then a bit more of the grass. So it's time to mark out the paths of the waterfall and for this I'm going to use some black green ink from Vallejo. So that's where the resin will be poured later. Right, on to plants and foliage, and first up it's some ferns from Nock. Again, these were gifted for use in a video, so thank you very much to them. They're pretty easy to use. They're made from a special paper, and you just press them out and shape them, and stick them down with glue. You can either leave them as single pieces like this, or you can double them up like this. Just stick them together with a small dab of glue in the middle, and then place them with another spot of glue on the bottom onto your landscape. The other materials I'm going to use were all gifted to me by Diorama Presepe, a little while ago actually. They include some Taloxis bloom, some weeds and nettles, some dwarf bushes of grass and some foliage which I'm just going to use for bushes. And these will all be stuck down using Knox grass glue. Mm -hmm. 
Now these dwarf grass bushes come in clumps and they can be pulled apart and then they can also be pulled apart lengthways to create even smaller little tufts. This Teloxis bloom also makes really nice tree foliage as you may have seen on one of my previous videos where I made a giant model tree but I just want to use it as bushes so I'm trimming off the stems at the bottom. And for a bit of variation in colour, I'm going to use some of this foam foliage. Okay, so this is a bit of an unusual use for waves and billows from Nock, but I'm going to be using it to wet the rocks. I like the particular sheen it gives. I mean, it's a brilliant product for creating waves and billows, as it says, but there are other ways to use products, and I like thinking outside the box. I'm sure I'll put it to its proper use in future projects. I'm certainly very grateful that Nock gifted it to me. And they also gifted me another product called Icicles. And again, I'm not going to be using this to create icicles, but I am going to use it to simulate tumbling water. It goes on white, but it dries crystal clear in a very short time. I'm also going to make some that I can peel off a clear acrylic packet so that I can hang these off ledges. And about an hour later it's dried completely clear. Time to peel those ones off the packet. Good job I play the guitar so I've got the thumbnail to cope with this. I dab more of the icicles where I want the waterfalls to go and they'll stick on fairly easily. One thing I've forgotten to do is to paint the riverbed. Now the resin I'm going to be using is two-part epoxy and this particular one doesn't get too hot and it doesn't really react with the foam so I'm not worrying about applying too thick a layer of paint underneath. In fact I'm going to be just using ink but I would advise exercising caution here. If in doubt protect your foam. And I'm just going to be using masking tape as a dam with a bead of white glue around the edge to seal it. So onto the resin and as I said this is epoxy resin, it gets mixed in two equal parts. I don't need very much of it for this project. Just make sure that you mix it nice and slowly so that you don't end up introducing too many bubbles. 
and I'm going to tint this with a couple of drops of green glass paint. Now mixing this paint in will show you when your resin is completely mixed because it will be streak free. Now starting at the top of each slope I'm just going to gently pour the resin onto the diorama and allow it to take its own course. It will of course pour over your icicles that you laid down earlier on but those provide a nice water texture underneath the resin as it thins out as it flows down. And then the remaining resin I'm just going to pour into the riverbed. 24 hours later I can remove the dam. There's a nice clean edge. But the resin always rises up as it dries when it meets an object. So you can remove that lip with a sharp blade. And then it's on to creating water ripples and for this I'm going to be using the usual method of Mod Podge blown around with a straw. This is the gloss variety, make sure you don't use the matte variety, that would look horrible. And the final stage is painting the white water and for this I'm going to be using some of Vallejo's Model Air White. And I'm going to try to not go too heavy with this but to create a look of foaming water, sometimes rushing, sometimes trickling. And here's where the water texture created by the Icicles product really works. So there we are, done, finished. Thank you very much to Nock for their products and thank you very much to Diorama Precipe for theirs. Now I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate all the support my viewers give me. It's really nice reading the comments about how calming you find these videos and that's really why I started this channel. I too find calm watching other creators bringing some amazing projects to life and I can't tell you how rewarding it is to know that my videos are offering people a sense of peace and calm as well. So thank you very very much indeed. I'll see you next time, until then take care and cheerio.